to try on a pair of jeans. You do want them to fit in the waist. If they don't, you will have to do a few alterations. Please take them in to fit in the waist, which is normally can be fixed by a few simple darts. But that will be another tutorial. If you can find a pair that fits perfectly already, great. Now you're going to need to mark with a pen or chalk somewhere where you want the shorts to end. Don't worry if it's too short, we're going to be adding pants back on them, just not jeans. So I've played the same pattern here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these jeans into shorts, but save the legs. guys so to make the bottom of the jeans depending on your height you want to take a fender bandana line it up to see how many you need so I'm going to need one and a half so to do both legs I'm going to make three bandanas so one of the bandanas I'm going to cut it right down the middle What you're going to do is take a whole bandana put the right sides together and sew here to make it one long continuous piece again and you're going to do that to both bandanas all right so now you see i have a long continuous piece and i've done this for both um, legs so now we're going to fold in half so we can make the rest of our pants. And I'm putting the smaller part towards the bottom of the pants leg just so it doesn't look so busy on the thigh. Okay, now take one of those old pants legs and flip it inside out. So you want to be mindful if your jeans are actually jean material or if it's a little bit of a stretch. If it's stretchy, please still use it, but you want to be mindful of the bandana since it's not stretchy. So you're going to see me cut um, bigger than this piece just because it's safer for me to go back in and make smaller than to cut the piece too small. So I'm going to line the straight edge up. Scratch that. I'm going to use the bottom. I'm going to start at the bottom since it's already finished. So I'm using the already finished bottom of the jeans. So I'm placing the bottom of my pants about half an inch away from the bottom. Saves time with hemming, sorry. Then I'm gonna have the straight edge lined up with the fold. And now you see the difference of a slant. So I'm actually gonna cut about one and a half inches away from this. It's normally it's a lot, but again, this is stretchy and this is not. And I wanna accommodate the difference here. So it's gonna be a huge seam allowance of about an inch and a half. Now you have two of these pieces, same as like that. So you're now going to take both pieces, flip them right sides in, and you're going to stitch all the way down to both. All right, guys, so I've gone ahead and sewn the bottom of the pants leg up and I've tried them on so I can make sure that they're not too small and not too tight because I would hate to sew these onto the jeans and it would not work. Also, this is a great way to make boot covers or if you want to do some DIY boots. So this is just an idea. 
All right, so with the part that you just sewn closed in the center for both, you'll see the angled part is going inward. Now you're gonna grab your shorts. Work them inside out. Now, take the same, take one pants leg, feed it through the top of the pants, through one leg. This is the ankled part now, still in the center. Take the part that you just sewn and line it up with the center of the pant and place a pin there. So it stay lined up. Now, find the opposite side. There won't be a seam there, but this is where it was on a fold. Eyeball that and also line that up with the other side of the sh shorts. Now you have the um, my shorts are stretchy so I'm going to pull the jeans until it lines up with all the bandana that's sagging inside and I'm going to pin until there's no sag. Okay so I put my pants leg inside right sides facing together and I just pinned it all the way around and I'm going to go ahead and sew and repeat for the other leg. Take one bandana, fold it right side in, so the long end to the short end and then you don't want to open it here but you're going to go ahead and sew it all the way down leaving about a two inch gap only. You're also going to want to see if you have any scraps from when you cut your pants that are about three inches or so wide but at least 14 inches long or the full length of the bandana. So I do have two pieces just like that. And we were actually going to flip the right side in on itself and stitch all the way down as well for two pieces. Alright, so you can see I've sewn one side completely, sewn the bottom, and left a little opening here. Reach in and flip it inside out. Make sure you pull out the corners so they're nice and crisp. It's all said and done as also get the two strips. Normally we would flip these inside out but I like the contrast in the color compared to the front side so I'm not going to flip it inside out but what you do want to do is go ahead and press this seam to the back center. Okay and now to work on the sleeve. I'm incorporating light paint because I don't have enough dark paint with me so we're going to make it work. Put the light pink in the middle. We're going to take the lighter pink and I'm going to sandwich them. And I'm going to sew the right sides together to make one long continuous chain of three bandanas and I'm going to do that with the second set in the same pattern. Okay guys, so as you can see I now have a long continuous sh strip of three bandanas. I'm going to do this, make two of these, one for each sleeve, but for the first one you're going to go ahead and put the right side out, meaning you don't see the seams. 
and we're now going to fold it hot dog style or sabo. So we're going to do one long stitch all the way down and we're going to repeat the same process for the second okay, stitch. Okay, so we now have two strips of three bandanas sewn together and, and sewn closed down the side. Now take it and flip them right side out. We reveal a very long rectangle. So the seam is now in the center because we're going to actually cover it up. Now go back to those two strips that we made and grab one in the center of your strip. And you can place a pin there to mark it. And you're going to find the center of this long strip as well. And you want to pin the center of that to the center of the long strip. Next, so I can make sure that everything is evenly pleated, I take the end of the small strip and pin it to the end of the long strip. And then I just keep finding the center of the design and pinning. And then I'm going to place, do some even um, pleats all the way through the design. It's going to begin to look like that, kind of like an accordion. And we're going to do it all the way down the whole uh, remainder of the strip and the small strip. Once we have it all sewn together, you're actually going to do two stitches down this long strip, one on this side and one on that side, because this is going to form a casing that we're going to side some elastic through. So it forms to the arm. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done both. I pinned the entire duration of the longer strip to the smaller strip by doing a series of pleats. So if you look at it up close, what you're going to do is do one long stitch all the way down one side and one long stitch all the way down the other side. Because the center, we're going to slide some elastic through so these stay on okay, your guys, arm. So I have gone ahead and sewn the two stitches side by side so I can slide a casing through here. But to get the amount of elastic needed, we are going to go ahead and measure our bicep. So you're going to need some elastic. I ordered this from Amazon. And you're going to go around your bicep here, the widest part. Go ahead and flex if you need to. Um, but you want it to fit snug but not unbearable. See what that measurement is and cut two strips. Pierce the safety pin on one end and close it. And you're going to feed it through the um, casing you created. Okay. So I have a piece of the elastic on this end, and I'm holding a piece here with the safety pin. You're going to then bring outside like sides together. And you're going to bring the ends together and sew across. So this is the elastic going through it, and you want to sew the two raw edges together and repeat for both sides. Right, so I now have this entire side closed up to enclose that entire kind of rectangled ruffle creation we made. And now you flip it out so you can see the band casing. And this is going to be our sleeve. Too lazy to adjust it, but that rectangle that we made earlier from one bandana that we have the opening in one side. Take one of your sleeves 
and I'm going to do the pink side towards the garment just so it's even on both sides placement wise and for the length of this Find the center of the pink, dark pink portion. Place a pin and sew the entire length of this rectangle piece. And we're going to then stitch up and down both sides to attach the sleeve to the top. And we're almost there. Okay, so I now have both sleeves attached to my shirt. Here is a sleeve down the middle. Sleeve. This is the inside of the shirt. And then there's the other sleeve. So what we want to do is take some elastic. If you have a thinner elastic, that'll be perfect. Here I'm just using what I got. So we're going to sew from the area you attach the sleeve to, that seam right there. You want to place some elastic at the top and sew, pull while you sew in a zigzag stitch. Um, you do want to use about a centimeter from the top, expose so it can gather. You can have like a little small ruffle and then we'll do the same thing at the bottom. Okay, so can see here I have my elastic in the center portion and it creates a little gather at the top as well as some gathering at the bottom so one more last thing we're going to do is for the bottom of your shirt where you start and stop your elastic and added your sleeves we're going to add a band for the back of the shirt to just hold it tight for some extra security so all you need to do is grab your elastic again, bring it around you, pull it tight, it's not unbearable, to your sides. And I'm doing about mid-back, that's where my top started, right, right where my bra ends underneath, bra band, so side to side seams. Gather that measurement and go ahead and cut the elastic. And then on my shirt, on my designated bottom, I'm going to stitch the elastic on one end and come back and stitch it on this end, creating a band at the bottom of the shirt. All right, guys, so now you can see I sew my elastic back band on. And it lines up with the elastic of the front of the shirt, okay, guys. So you're going to need a band for the top of your shirt as well. Let's so go back to your elastic and coming from behind again. But this time you're going to be coming from up, like above your bra instead of below that like time. And you're going to meet at the side seams, pull snug but not uncomfortable, and cut. Here. This is where we added the band on the bottom. You're gonna do the same thing to the top in the same place where this elastic for the top portion stopped and started. So sorry guys, I forgot to film myself adding the shoulder straps as well, which gave me extra support for this top so it stayed up when I leaned over.